Well, hey everyone, what's up? You are not gonna wanna miss this episode. We're gonna talk about five mistakes that small business owners make, especially when it comes to social media. And my guest is an expert at helping small business owners succeed with their social profiles. My name is Susan Sly. If you don't know me, make sure you hit the subscribe button. This is raw and real entrepreneurship. I'm an entrepreneur. I oversee three businesses. I've got five kids and a whole lot of life going on. And in these conversations, when I'm interviewing founders, I'm sharing tips. It's to help people just like you, because guess what? Small business is the backbone of the economy and I want to see you succeed. So with that, get ready for the next episode of the Susan Sly Project. Welcome to the Susan Sly Project, where entrepreneurs rule, startups launch, and the side hustle becomes the main hustle. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Susan Sly. All right. Hey, everyone. I am so excited you're here. You know, social media, big question, right? And when you are starting a business, when you maybe are transitioning from a career to your side hustle, you got a lot of stuff going on, you're wearing a lot of hats and it's like, oh my gosh, I have five minutes to focus on social media. What should I even be doing? Or maybe you're looking at other business owners, social media, and they're crushing it and you're going, I don't know. I don't have the bandwidth. I don't have the resources. Well, my My guest today is an expert at helping small business owners with their social media, and she's going to be sharing the biggest mistakes that small business owners make, and I'll I'll see if I'm making some of those. But anyway, a little bit about her background. Not only is she a graduate of the W.P. Carey School of Business um, with a degree in marketing, she is the marketing and brand manager for Agency 8, which is the agency that I founded and she has worked with some of the biggest hottest brands in luxury automotive space she also worked in the food space and she mentors hundreds of small business owners in helping them get their social media on point and she specializes especially in helping business owners who are maybe a little bit late to the social media game those people who are 45 plus she's also my daughter and amazing so avery sly thank you for being here thank you so much for having me i'm happy to be here So Avery, I want to just jump in right now. What are, before we get into some of the mistakes people are making, what are some of the biggest trends on social media that people should be taking advantage of that you're seeing for business owners? Yeah. So one of the biggest trends, to be completely honest with you, is getting on TikTok. I've experienced a lot of pushback from people I've worked with about getting on TikTok. They're like, oh, it's just for kids. It's just for, you know, dancing and all that. And that's just not true at all. If you aren't on TikTok, you are behind the curve. Businesses from All areas and all industries are already on TikTok. If you go and you look up Ryanair, for example, they have an incredible TikTok. It's absolutely hilarious. Um, Flex Seal, like that tape that you use to fix everything, they're on there. Automotive companies, restaurants, etc. It's a great way to get short form visual content in front of your audience. The reach is unparalleled on any other platform. And it's a great opportunity for business owners to get creative, capitalize on trends, and really, you know, connect with their audience in a more personal way. Is there any kind of business that TikTok is not for? You know, honestly, in my opinion, everyone can utilize TikTok in some way, shape or form. If, for example, you don't have a tangible product and you're a service provider, for example, maybe you're a lawyer. I've seen so many people, so many lawyers, teachers, chemists, etc., just educating people on TikTok and using that platform as a way to educate others. So, for example, if you're a lawyer, you might make a video, like a selfie video, just kind of like this and say, here are my five top legal tips. Or if you're an accountant even, hey, you know, tax season is coming up. Have you done these five things? Or have you done these three things? Or here's how to do a tax return. Educating people if you're a service provider is, in my opinion, one of the best ways to utilize TikTok because then people begin to see you as an authority. And, you know, maybe it's like an 18 year old kid who doesn't need legal or accounting advice at the time. But when they do, they remember you from TikTok and they might reach out to your agency, your, you know, law firm, your accounting firm, and want to work with you in the future. So I don't personally, I cannot think of any industry specifically. I've even seen the waste industry on TikTok. TikTok. So there is absolutely everything out there. 
Well, Avery, that's, I, you know, I think when, when people are looking at some of these social media platforms, there's a lot of confusion. Should I be on LinkedIn? Should I be on Instagram? Should I be on TikTok? Should I be on Pinterest? I mean, Twitter, Facebook, it, it, and, and it really ebbs and flows. And if someone has maybe just enough time to focus on one, do you suggest they try and just focus on one or should they try and have a presence on all of them? So this is a great question and one that I actually get a lot from my clients. And, you know, in my personal opinion, I think having two is the sweet spot. Two is manageable, in my personal opinion. And for many business owners, I recommend using Facebook and Instagram because they're owned by the same company, Facebook. You're able to post your Instagram content to your Facebook. You can post your Facebook stories to your Instagram stories, your Instagram stories to your Facebook, etc. So it makes it a lot easier if you don't have the time to just create one piece of content and distribute it on those platforms. Now, maybe your avatar isn't on Instagram. And in that case, you know, maybe you want to check out LinkedIn. It really does involve doing a little bit of research and just figuring out the age demographics. Every time I, you know, teach a course or work with a new client, I like to bring them statistics. It's like I got that from my mom. Um, and I like to give them some information and also include age demographics. And so that's important to look at. It's very easy to find on Google, but just knowing where your audience is and being sure to capitalize on those platforms. Like, for example, if if you if you're you know selling a product to people in their 50s and 60s then maybe snapchat isn't the best place for you to try to reach your audience or maybe even instagram isn't the best place for you to reach your audience but facebook is an option and so is linkedin so it's just about knowing where your audience is and being cognizant of who your target audience is which is absolutely critical and very important in business well, Avery, that's that's powerful. And I know it's a relief for a lot of people because they're thinking, oh my gosh, like where do I need to be? And a confused mind is not a productive mind. Let's jump right into these five big mistakes because I know just before we went into recording the show, we were talking about what some of them are. And and sometimes people just aren't aware that they're not doing something. So I want to disclaim this and saying the very fact you're listening to this, you're watching this, that is a great move <laughs> as a first step, right? And and whatever you've done in the past, you can totally clean it up. It's not a big deal. Avery, so what's the first biggest mistake people are making when it comes to their social media? Yes, so the first biggest mistake is not using it at all. That means you have no presence on any platform or you know maybe you made a Facebook page in like 2013 and you haven't touched it since for your business. As a business owner, it is critically important to have at least a consistent presence on at least one platform. Now, I mentioned two earlier, and that's fantastic. But if you're really struggling with two, find where your audience is and really stick to one and do it well. Here's why. In 2021 and in 2020, consumers, they use social media as a search engine. You know, how many times have you gone to purchase something and you've maybe looked up a video on YouTube? I know I personally do it. I'm really into uh, Amazon athletic wear right now. And so I'll watch YouTube videos of people choosing their favorite athletic wear, like from that as well. And same with Instagram, you know, I might look them up on Instagram and see what the company is posting. And all these brands, they have a presence on social media. It's also an excellent opportunity that you cannot miss to connect with your customers on a more personal level. And for small business owners, this is really important. As a small business owner, you're often wearing multiple hats. You're constantly, you know, focusing on 10 things at once, but it gives you a great opportunity to connect with your customers. If you post a photo on Instagram and a customer comments, wow, I love this product, or wow, you look like such a great coach or something along those lines, you can respond to them and show them that you're engaged, that you're interested, that you care about what they're saying. Additionally, social media gives you an opportunity to get feedback from customers, input, and really showcase your products and services in a lot of ways that you can't do otherwise. Like it's great that you have a website and if you don't have a website, please get a website. There's a statistic out there. The majority of small businesses do not have a website. So have a website, but also, even if you don't have a website, you need to have a Facebook page then. Because if I'm Googling your business and I can't find anything about you, I'm not gonna make a purchase from you and I'm gonna move on. When, when buyers go to make a decision, there's a stage of the buying journey called evaluating alternatives. And this is where the buyer is doing research. You know, Where can I get the best prices? Where can I get the best quality product? And they may be looking at you compared to other businesses. And you know who's on Instagram, Facebook, and other social media? Your competitors. 
competitors. So you need to make sure that you have a presence on at least one of these platforms so that you're able to get in front of your customers and connect with them on that more personal level. Avery, that's powerful. And, and thinking about this concept of so many people, they're, they're focused on their product. They're focused on just, you know, really, you know, all the different things in business, but they're not paying attention to their social media. And I read a statistic that 78% of buyers will look at someone's social media before they make a decision to purchase. And it doesn't matter what business you're in. All right. So what is the second biggest mistake people make? So the second biggest mistake is not using hashtags when you are on social media. Now for Facebook, you know, hashtags aren't necessarily as important, but they're still usable. LinkedIn actually has a hashtag feature. So if LinkedIn is your main platform, use hashtags and use industry specific hashtags. Where hashtags really play the biggest role is Instagram. Now, full disclosure, I don't personally use Twitter and it's not that I advise against it. I just don't personally think it's the place to be for businesses because there's a big emphasis on visual content and you know you don't twitter is more word based and uh, a little bit more of a fiery location in my opinion so i'm going to skip over twitter but there's a reason for that now for instagram for example if you're using hashtags now i have a friend that makes custom pearl jewelry and originally when she started posting on her account it was nothing against her but she wasn't using hashtags and you know she wasn't getting her content in front of people that are going to potentially make a purchase. So if if you're using pearl jewelry as the example, something you might include is hashtag pearl jewelry, hashtag custom jewelry, hashtag, et cetera, et cetera. You can use up to 30 hashtags on Instagram. The sweet spot that I've personally found is around 11 to 13. And you want to do a mixture of smaller hashtags. Now, what I mean by small is when you're typing in the hashtag in your caption, section it'll start giving you some recommendations we've got big ones that are all the way up in like the tens of millions of posts and we've got some smaller ones which i consider to be you know anything fifty thousand or less which may seem like a lot still but that's relatively small compared to other hashtags if you look up hashtag dogs for example I'm pretty sure there's like a billion posts on there so the odds of your content being pushed to the top of that may are a little bit smaller um and i often i run a lot of different automotive themed pages. And so something I'll do is I have my broad hashtags, including cars of Instagram, supercars, etc. But then if the photo is of a Lamborghini Huracan, I'm going to do hashtag Huracan, hashtag Lamborghini Huracan. You want to be specific to the content in the image. And this goes for any hashtag on any platform, TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, etc. You want to make sure that your hashtags are relevant. Now you can take advantage of trending hashtags on TikTok, which I'm not going to get into right now because it could, it could be a whole other episode. But you just want to make sure that you are using hashtags specific to the content because these algorithms are so smart. They know if you use hashtag dogs on a picture of a horse, for example, they know that's not a dog. They know it's a horse and they're not going to prioritize that content as high. But using hashtags helps you get in front of potential customers. It helps you. You can do research using hashtags as well. And you can look up what your competitors are doing. You can look up similar products, similar services and see what others are doing and kind of emulate their content as well. So hashtags are extremely valuable for your business, both for doing research and getting in front of customers and increasing brand awareness. So what I'm hearing, Avery, is that making sure you're using broad hashtags and narrow hashtags and then being consistent with it. And yeah. the other thing I found, um, one of the hashtags I use is uh, Scottsdale Entrepreneur and going in and following other people who are mm -hmm. using that hashtag because that does create more collaboration, which is which is huge. OK, what is the third thing that the biggest mistake that you're seeing people make right now? The third biggest mistake might also be one of my biggest pet peeves. And this is nothing against anyone that's that's guilty of this. But, you know, today you're here, you're listening, you're watching. This can change. OK, and so number three is posting bad content. Bad content encapsulates a lot of different things, but the primary thing I'm talking about is bad quality content. If you are a restaurant and let's say you have this beautiful gnocchi dish and I'm hungry, so I'm going to talk about gnocchi for a moment, mm, just pillowy deliciousness, and you have this delicious dish, 
you're not going to do that dish credit if you take it in a poorly lit room where it's grainy, it's blurry, you can't tell what it is, it looks like a bowl of mush, and you don't want to post that on your social media. And so many times I see business owners sacrificing quality for quantity. There's this misconception that, oh, I need to, as a small business owner who's growing, I need to post eight times a day every single day. That used to be the case. However, that's not necessarily true. At least once a day is a great time to, or at least once a day is a great posting strategy. However, you can also post three to five times a week. Don't over exert yourself. Don't sacrifice quality for quantity. And this is a big thing. Additionally, bad content includes overly political content. I know there's a lot going on in the world, you guys, but your business, in my personal opinion, does not need to take a political stance on these issues. It will affect people that are purchasing from you, okay? If you want to be a part of a cause, then do some sort of, you know, some sort of cause. Choose a non-political charity such as your local humane society and donate 10 percent of the proceeds from your business to that society and if you want to post quote-unquote political content replace it with a cute photo of an adoptable dog that you helped find a phone uh, felt not a phone helped find a home with your business's mission don't get political on social media as a business it's just not a great business practice you guys and you don't want to alienate people that are potential customers okay bad content also includes content that is overly filtered okay there's you don't use Instagram filters there's a lot of editing apps out there that are very simple to use after light 2 is one of my personal favorites it has a lot of built-in filters there's also visco lightroom which is completely free a little bit more complicated and snapseed which is another free one that I love to use you can use those just adjust the contrast etc but just don't overly filter your product you know you don't want to for example if you're selling a car by adding this filter to it it might look a completely different color in the photo than it does in person and then it's kind of like the person showed up because they thought it was this color and then they see it in person they're not interested anymore so just be cognizant of how filters and how your editing is shifting how the image looks. I used to work for a restaurant and we made specialty drinks and I would never touch the color of the drink because I didn't want a customer to come in and see this drink and be like, oh, that's not what it looked like on your Instagram profile. So just being cognizant of that, not being political and not posting blurry content. Guys, most of us have a smartphone. We have an iPhone or Android with a fantastic camera. You don't need to go out and buy a super expensive camera to create quality content. You just need to Hold your hands steady and take a good photo in good lighting, and that will make a massive difference. Well, and I think that the, as social media has progressed, Avery, um, some people who were maybe early adopters, what you know, on say Facebook, right, in two thousand and eight, mm -hmm. you could post that that selfie. It was a little blurry, and that was okay. But on different platforms, the expectation, especially Instagram, is that mm -hmm. it is going to be a higher quality photo or a higher quality video. Okay. And um, you know, the thing I would say is a little bit of filtering, especially you know, for those of us of a certain age, is totally fine. But just don't mm -hmm. go crazy so you look like a mime. All right, Avery. So, <laughs> what is the next thing that people should not do? Before I jump into that really quickly, it's of course if you're taking a selfie it's okay to put a filter on it it's okay it's totally okay i was more specifically talking about products in that photo but if you are a service-based business owner don't be shy about you know putting your face out there and with facebook you know you can have your personal page and have your business page so post what you want on your personal page i'm not going to tell you what to do over there but on your business page keep it clean keep it professional you can always use different and this kind of transitions into our next point here but you can also use social media to show a more intimate look of your business and so that's number four which is not taking advantage of stories now Facebook and Instagram this is what I'm specifically talking about here they have stories stories for those of you that may not know are 24 hour bits of content so you put it out on your story it's up for 24 hours and then it's gone so this is a fantastic opportunity, you guys, that I see a lot of business owners kind of missing out on. Now, here's the different things you can do with stories. There's a stickers option. And on that stickers option, you can do things like 
polls, you can ask questions, you can do quizzes, you can ask, you know, you can do rating bars where people can show how much they love something. This is a huge opportunity if you're a business owner. Um, for example, for my dealership client yesterday, we have multiple Rolls Royces in. So I created a collage using an app called InShot. I like to give you guys my apps. You can use it for free. There is a paid version. I just use the free version, but you can make collages and you can set them to the aspect ratio of an Instagram story. So I had a Rolls Royce Wraith on top and a ghost on the bottom and I had our followers guess or, or vote which one they preferred and which one they would rather have. Our story views doubled and our engagement was about half of the viewers, which is absolutely crazy. Using these features on Instagram, Instagram's like, hey, you know, this person knows what they're doing. They're asking questions. They're getting people engaged. They're keeping them on the platform. The algorithm will then reward you. It's going to push your content in front of more people. Additionally, if you're a business owner, again, you're wearing a lot of hats. You may not have time to post every single day and take the time to write out a thoughtful caption. So this is where Instagram stories come into play. Facebook stories come into play because you can show less formal content behind the scenes content is fantastic. If you are a small business owner making things by hand, show your process, film you shipping out orders. If you are a service-based business, maybe share what your office setup looks like. Do a behind the scenes, a day in the life. Like, hey, I'm about to hop on a coaching call. So excited to, you know, work with someone new different things like that and taking advantage of stories it gives you a chance to get feedback from your audience with things like polls quizzes questions etc you can even ask as a business owner for example you know maybe you're changing your logo which logo do you like better top or bottom you can have people vote they feel fantastic because they feel like they're a part of the decision making process in your business and again stories just gives you that opportunity you can post a quick selfie for me i'm in the automotive space but i just post memes on my stories which are just funny jokes and, you know, I had someone today who was like, I, I always have to double check when I watch your story because I don't know if it's you or a meme page. And that's totally fine because I get lots of engagement from that. So even funny content, silly pictures, et cetera, that's fine for stories. It doesn't have to be as polished as something like a feed post. Therefore, it takes less time and therefore you should be taking advantage of it. <laughs> Thank you, Avery, for that. And I see a lot of people are not taking advantage of stories and stories are that, like you said, it's that glimpse into your life. It's the person behind the brands, behind the business. And if you did take that selfie hiking, it's a little bit blurry, throw it on your story. It's all good. All right. The fifth and final mistake people are making. Yes. And the last thing about stories, too, is it gives you that opportunity to not just be a faceless small business, right? Do you know what the person who is, you know, the CEO of Lululemon, I mean, maybe you do know what they look like, but you don't see them on their Instagram. Whereas a small business, you have a bit of an advantage, like you are the CEO of your business and you can talk to your customers directly. They can get to know you, get to like you, and that's going to make them want to make a purchase. Another opportunity to do this is our fifth one. Our fifth mistake that I see small business owners making is not using video. Now, believe it or not, I was actually, I like to continue my education on social media at all times. And uh, I was in a uh, situation where someone was educating others and telling them not to use video because it's too hard. Let me tell you something. As a small business owner, you would not have made it to where you are today if you gave up when things got hard. And you're, I'm sorry to say this, but your business is not going to be successful if you give up when things get hard. My mom has made it incredible lengths in her life because she didn't give up when things got hard. So if video is hard, let's fix that for you guys. In college, we had a class and it was a sports marketing class. And I absolutely loved this class. And one of our assignments was that once a month, we had to review a current event that was happening in sports and we had to talk about it on video for two minutes. Do you know how many takes it took me? It, it definitely was not done in one take. I took maybe 150 takes, but I got that video done. And here's the thing is that when I was doing those takes and also, sorry, to finish about the project, we also had to respond to two classmates using a video. So we had to show ourselves to our classmates, etc. So here's how you can apply that in your own life. First is that when doing those 150 takes, I got pretty good at figuring out what angles worked best for me, how my talking style converted on video, and I got practice. Practice makes perfect. And this is the exact same advice I gave to my brother recently because he has a similar project in school, but it works for business as well. 
We all have a camera roll on our phone. So just take out your camera and start talking about something you're knowledgeable about. You don't have to do it with the intention of posting, but just start talking and get comfortable looking at the camera, looking at yourself while you talk, figuring out what works and what doesn't work. Watch it back and just learn, hey, you know, when I blink like this the whole time, it's a little bit creepy. You know, you might go through and change some things. So just practicing. Another thing is potentially finding an accountability partner. So this is something I recommend to my clients as well. We have a community that we've built and I encourage them to find an accountability partner if they're uncomfortable with a video, someone they're comfortable with who you know is gonna give them positive feedback that you can maybe send a video to. So for example, you know, you can say, hey Susan, you know, I, how are you doing? And just practice sending them a video practice sending videos instead of text sometimes. I received an email, um, I was talking with someone over email and he was sending me video emails. He's like, I don't like to type, so he was sending videos. Uh, LinkedIn, for example, I have a client. Every time he connects with someone new on LinkedIn, he sends them a personalized video saying, hey, it's so lovely to connect with you. I'd love, like, here's a bit of information about me. I'd love to get to know you. Video shows the personal side of you, of your business, if you have products, take videos of your products, take videos of people using your products. For example, my friend who makes necklaces, take videos of them wearing the necklaces in different you know, situations. Having proof of customers wearing and using your product, for example, makes, is, makes for an excellent tool in terms of having people wanna make a purchase from you. And it's an excellent resource you can use. So if you aren't using video, if you're shy, if you're scared of video, Practice, 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 because with TikTok and with the rise of Instagram Reels, video really is the preferred content. And 8 billion videos are watched every single day on Facebook. So video provides a massive opportunity, and I would not want for you to miss out on that chance to increase your brand awareness, connect with your customers, and show that more personal side of you, but also show your products and services in action. Well, Avery, thank you for those tips and the mistakes people are making. And yeah, it's about getting out of your comfort zone and just saying, hey, you know what? I, I, I'm uncomfortable. I, you know, I'm, I'm releasing this need to be perfect and just getting your message out there anyway. And so for everyone, if you want to connect with Avery, if you'd like to hire her as a coach or a consultant, just go to agency8.com. Um, that is where you can find her. She does one-on-one -on -one social media coaching. She also does consulting to businesses. And with that, Avery, any final tips and words of inspiration before we wrap it up? Social media, it's a crazy place. It's constantly changing, but it can provide so much opportunity for your business and investing that time to just get to know the basics, posting content, having a frequent presence on at least one platform can do a world of wonder for your business and help you increase brand awareness, connect with customers and show a more personal side of you that you may not get to show on your website, for example. So you guys can do it. I believe in you. If you want to work with me, I would love to work with you. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and get posting. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much, Avery. So with that, this has been another episode of the Susan Sly Project. And if this episode has helped you in any way, we'd love a five-star review on iTunes, on Spotify. And so with that, God bless, go rock your day, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>